This sentinel boiler, sentinels always used to have a, a vertical boiler, which is, um, is quite a good idea for a, a small boiler. The, uh, the fire is on the grate at the very bottom with an ash pan underneath. And then the, the, uh, the boiler is constructed of uh, an inner and uh, an outer uh, cylindrical shell uh, with the water uh, filling the, the space in between the two. So you've got the fire at the bottom, the hot gases rise up um, through, the, uh, through the, um, the inner shell and there are, there are cross tubes which give um, extra um, heating uh, surface area and then in, in the top of the boiler here, um, it's not fitted at the moment, there would be a, a superheater element so the, the steam from the boiler would be heated even further by the, the hot flue gases coming around the superheater coil. Uh, the, the boiler is fired from above. The coal is, is just dropped down a chute, down through, right down through the centre of the, the boiler to, to land in the grate right at the bottom. The lumps of coal are just dropped down in and um, in fact the, the top four tubes uh, where, where the coal would hit them, the, those four tubes are, are made of uh, a thicker gauge uh, steel to, to cope with the, with, with the coal falling on them. The, the uh, procedure for, for lighting the, the boiler from cold would be first to, to drop some uh, sticks of firewood down, down through the, um, the centre of the boiler t to land on the grate and, and then a, a paraffin soaked rag would be dropped down in followed by a, a lighted match to, to start it all off. And, and then small lumps of coal would be dropped down onto the fire and, and, and then um, with, within about 45 minutes it's possible to, um, to, to um, raise the steam pressure up to the working pressure. Well a conventional locomotive um, would take um, three or four hours from, from lighting up to, to raising uh, full steam pressure so it, it's a smaller, more compact boiler, um, less mass of metal. Well, the, the Sentinel engine here, it's got uh, two double acting cylinders arranged uh, vertically. The cylinders are hidden by this cover over the engine here. They're six and three quarter inches diameter by a, a nine inch stroke. And um, it's got um, inlets and exhaust valves um, on each end of each cylinder operated by push rods from um, two camshafts down in the crankcase here. So the two, the two um, pistons are um, driving um, connecting rods onto um, a big crankshaft here. And then the, the transmission to the engine is onto a cardan shaft. And then there's a, a large sprocket with, with a chain drive onto the first axle. And then the, there's a coupling chain on another sprocket which, which couples the first axle to the second axle. So we, we've got um, four-wheel drive. I, in a way, a, a chain is m more efficient than, um, than rods because with a coupling rod, it can only act um, when, the, um, when the crank pins are, are above the, um, the center line uh, of the axle. Whereas with, with a chain drive, you'll get smooth um, torque um, over the, the whole um, rotation of the, of the wheel. The, the engine develops about 100 horsepower, so it's, got a, it's quite a powerful, smooth uh, drive to, from the engine to the wheels.